Hey there, this is Epimetheus. The Corinthian helmet, often associated with the Spartans, is perhaps the most iconic helmet design ever invented. In the early archaic period of ancient Greek history, two helmets, the Kegel Illyrian and Corinthian types, would evolve into two variants that were used for more than 300 years. Through its wide depiction on the logos of sports teams, high schools, colleges, and universities, the latter's design is often associated with the Spartans. I attended a university with one on our logo, and if you did too, let me know in the comments what school or university it was, and is this as popular a name and logo outside of the United States as it is here. Although used by the Spartans, the helmet was most associated with the city of Corinth, hence the name, and another helmet was just as popular or more with the ancient Spartans during the classical Greek period. But it may not make such an imposing logo. More on that helmet later. But back to the Kegel helm, which is the earliest direct predecessor of later Greek Illyrian helmets, yet found from the Greek Archaic period. This helmet was made from five pieces riveted together, not including the crest holder. This evolved into the early Illyrian helmets, which were two pieces riveted together, with a slot for the crest on top. Later Illyrian helmets had a more ergonomic design, and began to have the felt padding glued inside the helmet rather than being sewn to the sides, or alternatively, a padded leather or felt hat was worn underneath the helmet. The last iteration of the Illyrian helmet before its abandonment included a cutout on the side to allow for better hearing. Although the development of this helmet occurred in the Peloponnese, the helmet is named after the region of Illyria, where large numbers of these helmets have been excavated. The Corinthian helmet followed a very similar pattern of design changes, contemporarily or slightly later, to its Illyrian counterparts. Some early examples consisted of two pieces, as with early Illyrian helmets, later being fashioned from a single piece with a gradually more ergonomic tight-fitting design, and an indentation separating the chin and neckline. A cranial ridge was also added for increased structural support, and as with the Illyrian, padding began to be glued inside, as a bronze helmet could protect one from being cut but without padding, the force of the blow could still cause death or considerable damage. In ancient Greek hoplite warfare, two densely packed groups of warriors clashed in an intimate bout where shields were pressed up against each other while each warrior tried to find an opening in his opponent's armor to exploit. In this style of warfare, protecting one's face from the hedge of spears darting toward it was obviously a priority. Consequently, this led to the Corinthian helmet's popularity and longevity throughout the Greek city-states. At the end of the 6th century, the older Corinthian helmet had spawned two successors. The Chalcidian helmet increased the girth of the cranial ridge, as well as emphasizing increased hearing and vision in its design and was extremely popular throughout the Greek world, including southern Italy. And the more closed Corinthian helmet, that increased the length of the neck guards and created a larger cavity at the top of the dome allowing for more circulation. This was probably the most popular variations of the Corinthian helmet. In its final form before falling out of use, cutouts for hearing were added, as well as a little lip at the back to guard the neck. This is probably my favorite form of the helmet. Let me know which one is yours down in the comments. Later Chalcidian helmets included hinged cheek pieces. Other variations would abandon the nose guard, commonly referred to as the Attic helmet, and become popular in Italy. And its evolved forms would even be used well into the Roman Empire, popular among generals and officers. It is interesting to think how such different looking helmets could be later revisions of an original design that looked so different. The Italio-Corinthian helmet was a design based off the Corinthian helmet when not in combat use. The majority of times ancient Greeks would see a Corinthian helmet, it would be worn in this fashion, for it would have been far more comfortable wearing it in this fashion than the tight-fitting feeling of having it pulled all the way down. As you may have guessed, these helmets were extremely expensive and had to be custom-made, and were often handed down from father to son, modified to fit the individual. While the Spartan used the earlier forms of the Corinthian helmet, predominantly through the Archaic period, by the time of the Peloponnesian War, the conical Pylos helmet, named after a felt hat of a similar shape, became the most widely used helmet among Sparta and her allies, and saw little use in the north. In classical Greece, this would have been the helmet that would have been thought of as typically Spartan. This helmet was cheap, easy to make, and mass-produced. It did offer much less protection, although one had a much increased field of vision and hearing. Perhaps because of the Spartan's superior training and skill, less protection was a desirable trade-off, in exchange for increased ability to read the battlefield situation, and hear commands. But unfortunately, this helmet does not look as inspiring in the depiction of a sports team or university's logo, and the ancient Greeks thought the same thing. Despite the large numbers of these found, it was the Corinthian helmet that would be depicted more than any other helmet. It seems the Greeks romantically associated it with glory, and continued to depict it long after it fell out of use. As the classical world drew to a close and the Hellenistic began, helmets such as the Boeotian and Thracian came into prominence, and replaced the descendants of the archaic Illyrian and Corinthian helmets. If you made it this far, you may also like my video on Roman helmets, less common Roman helmets, or the Peloponnesian War. Alright you lot, 
I will see you later. Goodbye.